And then there is Fukushima. I'm going to call this, and then there is Fukushima. You'll see the reason why I'm creating this title on this YouTube. And then there is Fukushima. Because there are many topics that preoccupy any human being will have preoccupations at any given time that is epic monumental or rather insignificant. Our day-to-day -day lives continue in a way that we're activated mentally by issues that confront us in a day-to-day -day sense. And I find myself part of that idea, that reality, that we are confronted with immediate issues and uh, larger issues. And I've always referred to my commentary as creating a context, creating a context for the reality that we're in, what it is that we're facing. And I think that the position that I take the point, the point that I try to make is that there is a reason through my own understanding and hopefully insights that I have gathered over my life on earth, that I have certain insights and it's important to, to deliver those insights with honesty. And I have found that people on YouTube particularly, that are attacked, have this quality of honesty. It's not just that they're able to concisely configure the facts, just the facts, ma'am, reality. There is an insight, and it's delivered through a sense of what I like. I like the idea of honesty. It's truth is, as I have said, a moving target. And I, this morning I had a conversation, and I'm going to come back to, everything comes back to Fukushima from the point of view that this is the epic reality that we face as human beings, but there are also individual struggles, battles, passions, excitements that we have ongoing. Things have not just ended because we're in the end times, that kind of a philosophy. No, we are living entities that have fundamental needs, desires, concerns, no matter what. I imagine, I, I don't know, what, it, what, 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 what would it have been like to be with in, inside the concentration camps? What are, what are the things that preoccupy a person? And people made paintings, made art. They played music in the concentration camps. It's, it's hard to imagine in, in, a, in a sense, but it's, it's quite extraordinary when you think about it. And I came back from the National Art Gallery in Ottawa, Canada recently, just a few uh, days ago, four or five days ago, and the director actually pointed out that art is not uh, a superfluous add-on to our life, but it's a fundamental, essential part of life. If you look back, he made some great points about looking back 40,000 years and why would people represent something on a cave wall and consider it to be of importance. It actually survived. Imagine that, 40,000 years. Images of people taking their hand, blowing pigment and leaving their handprint, and apparently they were, uh, of, uh, they were female hands. Yes, they were female hands on the cave walls. And I'm gonna create a bit of a context. I'll keep this short. I'll keep this short. And then there is Fukushima. But obviously, there are issues that each person faces every day in some form or other. There are things that preoccupy us. And I had a conversation with a friend today. And the issue was money. He had been involved in the banking system and completely just uh, left it all. He was making a great life. And he, uh, you know, was in the banking system in London, England, the... <laughs> <laughs> the seat of the banking reptiles. Don't kid yourself. This, this city, this corporation called the City of London is 
instrumental in keeping everything going the way it is and functioning on the level of money extraction or not money extraction but uh, asset extraction to basically make everybody into slaves and uh, people that owe money rather than have assets. This is the fundamental nature of money. And money was created for this reason. People, this, this, this is my conclusion, that the reason we have money in a system that we are connected to is because it allows a certain part of the population to extract all the wealth, all that energy that has been created over centuries, maybe even millennia, who knows how long this goes, which is why you have organizations, secret organizations, people that have understood in order to own everything, you have to create a vehicle that delivers to your group, to your small clan, the energy of everything and everyone. And I said to my friend uh, what he thought it was that allowed, allowed this process to be so functional and effective at this time and before. And he was sort of dumbfounded. He had some, uh, some, some sort of thoughts about uh, uh, the reason money works is because I, I actually I don't I don't remember what he said why money works but I'll tell you why it works in the way that it is working my conclusion was that there are certain aspects to our nature this comes back to creating a context of why things are the way they are at this time we live in the age of fission how did they get away with covering up the fact that nuclear isotopes are now saturating our environment which could kill all life on this planet. This is proven. This is not conjecture. If you are subjected, if you even ingest one plutonium atom, you're going to die of a cancer. This is how it works. Maybe in 5 years, 10, 15, 20 years, depending on your immune system, I suppose. I'm not sure what mitigates the struggle internally. But anyway, my point to him was that the reason they got away with the money lie is because there is a quality... A weakness. Let, let me say it's a weakness in people that relate what I say. What I say is there is this tendency to externalize, to externalize whatever it is that we're experiencing to externalize it. This is why truth, facts, information, these are external aspects of our experience. And one of the things that happens when we, when we get trapped in externalizing, it's kind of complex because I am introducing something where you say, well, yeah, of course, there is a reality, an external reality. But there is also an inner world, and which, which needs to be balanced. There has to be a balance, obviously. If I make a painting, it is balanced with my feelings of what it is that I'm experiencing outside and interpreting that experience or creating that experience from an inner world. And my point was, the reason the money thing works is because it essentially focused on a flaw. Uh, yeah, I would say it's a flaw, a weakness. A weakness in our nature that has us externalizing or, let me put it this way, comparing ourselves to someone else. Rather than focusing on what it is that is my passion, my drive, my calling, my desire to go forward from a kind of inner feeling, this inner feeling that we're, we're continuously engulfed by what it is we feel with inside ourselves and to project that on the world. But then this curious thing happens where people focus on their neighbor. What does my neighbor have? He has a fabulous new pickup truck. Here in this town, pickup trucks are really popular, especially pickup trucks that are of the year that you're living in, in 2017, to have a pickup truck that's 2017, glossy, shiny, new, sitting in your driveway, then obviously a person will look at that and say, this is 
wow, this person has more than I have. I need to catch up to this. And this comparison thing, this comparison thing is quite destructive because it opens, it opens us up to being manipulated to desire something that we actually have no interest in. <laughs> it's something that happens in people and I have, I have felt this myself. Uh, for example, I, as, a, as a younger artist, I felt quite competitive in a field that was very populated and people were elbowing themselves past everyone to get the attention of whatever, whatever that attention that I desired at the expense of someone else that I would propagate my own self because of a numbers game, I suppose that I would be a more interesting artist to someone if I could eliminate a, a, a competitor, eliminate what I'm saying is that I would do everything in my power to create attention for myself at the expense of someone else. It's actually quite deranged and delusional. I, I realize this and uh, uh, my, my gain as a painter, a creative person, artist, is also predicated and dependent on the people that have gone before me or even the people that are around me that support what it is that I do through their own work. So it's a flawed world view to see ourselves in competition with. But this is why money worked. Because money was set up in order to say, I have more than you. This is the nature of money, especially since there is no reality other than some sort of fictitious belief in something and everything seems to boil down to belief. What the hell is that about? Everything is boiled down to what you or I believe. And I'm trying to create a context of why we end up in the place that we end up. And it's somehow always pointing towards the sense of competition that we have with one another. And it's very important to keep this competition alive on whatever level it might be, even from the point of view of a spiritual world. You can see people racing, racing to the finish line to be the spiritual leaders of our, of our, what is this, of, of our uh, existence that we look up to the uh, Bhagwans and the Dalai Lamas and the Popes who represent our, the height of our spiritual nature, even, never mind the material world, the spiritual world becomes a competitive playground as well. And then there is Fukushima. And my comment on this now is the idea that there are many things, important issues that preoccupy us every day because there are nasty, deviant, deviant entities, deviant organizations that try to steer us in a direction. And this comes out over and over on YouTube where people accuse each other of being deviance and trying to undermine the truth, the truth. But are they honest with their insight? I find very few honest people. And some of that has to do with the fact that they have their own struggle and are coming towards this. And I recognize it, but I discard these people because unless you have committed yourself the way I feel I need to be committed to this, 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 this level of honesty, in the way we deal with our day-to-day -day life, everything else becomes irrelevant. And then there is Fukushima. It sort of throws a blanket over all our activities from the point of view that why should we do anything if the end result will be total and utter misery, destitute, a destitute existence of illness and sickness that no one can really figure out what to do. How do you, how do you handle cancer? It has not been figured out. There is no solution on cancer. You have to eliminate the toxins that create the can and can that create the cancer. And cancer is not a virus or anything else. It's a level of toxicity based on primarily the nuclear isotopes released and all the other chemical poisons that are being released in foods, in foods, and in all other vehicles. The delivery system of the chemical pollution. Is, is incredible. It's huge. But the, the jewel in the crown, and then there is Fukushima, 
are the nuclear reptiles that are that have decided to kiss off on life for whatever reason. I have my views on this and I will go into this. I have. I say this is an extermination. It's not an extinction. It's an extermination and there is a big difference between an extermination and an extinction because an extinction could just be a random thing of something hitting the earth or volcanoes and fires and destruction and mayhem that happens naturally. But this is a concerted effort to stop all activity on this planet the way we know. The way we understand to be human beings is being stopped, stopped fundamentally with this catastrophe that has occurred at Fukushima. So all the other topics, in, in a kind of sequential way, need to lead back to, and then there is Fukushima. We need to end up in all our concerns and immediate necessities. There has to be this concept, what I have called the age of fission, needs to imprint itself on our frontal lobes, on our frontal lobes. And when you discredit people as a person, I'm saying, if you're listening to this and you're adversarial towards me or anyone else that says this, you need to have a deep heart check on whether you're on the side of life or whether you're on the side of death. And there is no real pin to dance on here. This is very straightforward. Once you have decided that this is a fact, every, every road leads to Fukushima. Every road leads to Fukushima, not Rome, not your bank account, not your pickup truck on your front lawn, not your conquests and your and your victories in life, these are all irrelevant once you consider the monumentality of the situation that we're in. So this is my, um, all the topics that I may bring up and I talk about art and I, I live my life every day, but the underlying factor here is an understanding and a resistance to. Once I've understood this, there is a fundamental nature within me that says you must resist. I, it's just there. It's like the people that have picked on money to create an enormous, uh, the extraction of all wealth into them, into their pockets, into their, into their clan. This is the same thing. I'm saying money is irrelevant. What is relevant is the food, the health, the water that we consume that keeps us going over generations over thousands of years, the way we've understood to have existed on this planet over thousands of years, this could come to an end. Well, what, what other topic is there? And it's not a Jonestown thing where people say, oh, you know, I'm going to uh, be part of the rapture and taken up into the, uh, the other dimension. What the hell, who, who the hell knows what dimension we're going to enter when we give up our last breath as a bag of blood on this planet. Is that all we end up being, bags of blood that end up what? Who knows? The thing we know for sure is that there are certain aspects to our nature that need to be fulfilled, that need to be recognized and fulfilled. And the highest part of us, this is what I've come back to, I, I've said this, the highest part of us is that which recognize, for an artist especially, the times we live in, and act accordingly. What is demanded of you and me at this time? That's all. And I'm not saying what you need to do. And my detractors, people who argue with me on this, need to have a hardcore heart check. What is it, a heart check? What is it that you need to do to make this experience into something when you kiss off, when you've had it, that you can say to yourself, I've actually, I've actually contributed to this experience rather than taken from it. And then there is Fukushima. Without that recognition, without that understanding, it's, I, I, su I suggest, and I insist actually, you're living a, an empty life based on the fact that this is the most monumental time ever in the history of our existence. And... Uh, now, people kind of focus on this as a kind of uh, Armageddon, 
uh, philosophical position, which is ridiculous. It's stupid. It has to do with each person living their conscience, what I say, doing the right thing. And in my discussion with the friend, and I talked about this, he, uh, he said, well, what is the right thing to do? And I said, you know, you know when you're fucking up and you're doing the wrong thing and all the explanations you're going to give to it, to, to, uh, uh, justifying whatever it is that you know to be wrong is going to bite you in the ass somewhere along the line and uh, I have I have I, I have thoughts about uh, the continuity of this what I love I love the idea of eternity I, I don't know why but I have this I say a romance with eternity because I don't sense this to be a finality but everything everything focus on the moment on the, the 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 moment that we're in everything focuses on this moment whether you you create that joy in another person that moment we have a large picture to consider but it's that moment that we we find ourselves in every day which is why i love painting because painting is basically expressing a moment at any given time and my my walls my walls are empty they're ready uh they're ready to uh, to take some more work, and uh, I will continue. And uh, I love people. I I think I'm really close to uh, a thousand subscribers. This is fucking hey. I'm gonna do a video. I think I have uh, 998 subscribers. So uh, I find that quite extraordinary to to listen to some some sort of, I call myself, I live in a town called Forest, I call myself the forest dwelling artist to listen to a guy in the middle of nowhere who makes paintings and uh, then there's Fukushima.